In this video, we're going to talk about glycolysis, which is the first step in cell respiration. Now, we've already talked about cell respiration kind of as an overview in topic two, where we discussed that there's this aerobic and anaerobic process. I do recommend that you go back and check out that video before you go into uh, the details of glycolysis, because it will put things into a little bit more perspective. OK, uh, but in this video, we're going to talk about what the different steps of glycolysis are. And we're going to talk about what the net gain of glycolysis is. All right, so what happens in glycolysis? In glycolysis, we are, let's first talk about where it happens. If we look at a cell, right, and uh, so this is the, the cell membrane out here, and um, we have a molecule of glucose, right, we're going to make that black, and what we want to do is that we want to make energy from it eventually. And we said in, the, in topic two, we said that this can happen either by a, uh, anaerobic cell respiration or by aerobic cell respiration. But the first part, so we'll say anaerobic and aerobic, right? But the first part of both processes is the same, which is what we call glycolysis, okay? And in glycolysis, what we're doing is that we're taking a molecule of glucose and then we're breaking it up, which will give us a small amount of ATP and the final product that it will produce is this molecule of pyruvate, okay? Now you have to know that glycolysis basically consists of four different steps, but you do not need to know any of the intermediate compounds, so the compounds in between when we go from glucose all the way over to pyruvate, okay? So let's have a look at what happens. You first have a molecule of glucose, and that molecule obviously has six carbons, right? The formula for glucose, as you probably know, is C6H12O6. Okay, then what's going to happen is that two molecules of ATP are going to transfer to uh, their phosphate groups to this glucose molecule, okay? And that is what we call phosphorylation, okay? It's a phosphorylation step because we're just adding a phosphate group. And we talked about what phosphorylation is in the previous video, right? Okay, then what happens after that? This six carbon molecule is then going to split in half, right? Hence the word lysis in glycolysis because lysis means splitting, right? It means to split. So this six carbon molecule with two phosphate groups is going to split into two three carbon molecules, right? So that's why it's, it's split. Then we're going to take two electron carriers called NAD, and we're going to uh, reduce these uh, electron carriers, right? And hence, if we are reducing the electron carriers, if these NAD NADs are gaining electrons and hydrogens, right, to become NADH, we call that reduction. But that also means that they are going to be taking them from this three carbon molecule. Hence, the three carbon molecule is being oxidized which is why we're going to call it oxidation. So if you're referring to the carbon molecules, it's oxidation, or you can say it's a reduction of the electron carriers. The final thing that will happen is then that four molecules of ADP, okay, so adenosine diphosphate, they're going to be phosphorylated by taking away these, um, these uh, molecules of phosphate, right? And that's going to happen in what we call substrate level phosphorylation. And it will produce four molecules of ATP. What you're left behind with is then two molecules of pyruvate. Okay, so there's two of them now, times two. And that's the final product of glycolysis. So you have to be able to describe that you use two molecules of ATP to phosphorylate the molecule. Then you reduce some electron carriers by oxidizing the carbon molecules. And then you make some ATP by um, taking the phosphate groups from these carbon molecules. Okay. Now, it's important to understand what the net product is of this uh, glycolysis process, right? Because if you think about it, you use two molecules of ATP in the beginning, but you produce four molecules in the end, which means that you have a net gain of two ATP, right? So net gain of two ATP, and you also had a net gain of two NADH, right? Because you just produced two NADH. And this is useful because we're going to use these compounds in later processes. So the outcomes of glycolysis, just to kind of like 
reiterate it, is two ATP molecules gained and two NADH molecules. We do not use any oxygen, right, which is why it's the common process in both aerobic and anaerobic cell respiration. But in anaerobic cell respiration, the, the process kind of ends here, okay? Then that's kind of like the end of the production of ATP. So you do, you do glucose, turns into pyruvate, and then for anaerobic cell respiration, that's kind of it, okay? But for aerobic cell respiration, so we'll write aerobic here and anaerobic, we still have a couple of more steps which will eventually produce a lot of ATP, right? Remember, the process of cell respiration is to produce ATP, right? This energy currency in the cell. And aerobic cell respiration is the most efficient way to do that. So what are the key points from this video? Is that glycolysis is a first step in cell respiration. It involves converting glucose into pyruvate in four steps. And that one key step, so the, almost the most important step you have to remember, is substrate level phosphorylation, right? Which is where we take those four ADP molecules, ADP, sorry, that's supposed to be a D, and convert them into four ATP molecules, right? The outcome, therefore, is two ATP molecules and two NADH. I hope that made sense. In the next video, we're going to talk about the next process of cell respiration, which is the link reaction.